computer. All right. All right, top of the top, top of the top. My name is uh, Daryl Q. Slade. I'm the author of The Alarm Clock and Book of Rhymes. And this is my new podcast. It's called Wealth is a State of Mind. What I did uh, for my publishing company, No More Suits, is like I, my focus is authors, you know, because me being an author myself for the last three years, um, I feel like, you know, authors are misrepresented. You know, you know, a lot of people don't really shine light on authors. So I wanted that for myself, but I also wanted that for authors that's around me, you know. Um, so we have a lot of affiliate authors with our uh, company, you know, like my aunt, I mean, my, my cousin, Dr. Ayo um, Gooden, you know, she has a book called A Single Bracelet Does Not Jingle. Um, we even got Professor um, Kaba Kabane on the site um, this year. I connected with him personally. Um, so he has a platform to reach our audience now, you know, North Carolina, Kentucky, Ohio, you know. And so now uh, I've been working with uh, Tiana on her project, her morning run for the last, you know, what, two and a half years. Uh, Tiana, we've been working. Yeah, on we've been on and off. Yeah, on and off. Right. <laughs> and now we've just been like, and, uh, like this, this, this last quarter, uh, Tiana reached out, she said, I want to get this shit done, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, she's, she's finished her project and it's, it's ready to release. She's still working on some things, but I got this copy right here. You know, I told her it's a blessing just to have, you know, paper out in the ether, you know what I'm saying? So I, I honor this, you know, to the extreme. So without, uh, Further ado, I would like to introduce Miss uh, Tiana Ballou. Can you just introduce yourself? Um, you know, talk about where you're from and about your project. Um, my name is Tiana. Um, I started this project like 2015, originally with my cousin Samara, and she also just came out with her own poetry book called the Unearthing. What's it called? And the Unearthing thing. I gotta find. It's on my own. Um, it's on Kindle. Um, it's on Kindle, and um, we just start. We started that 2015. Oh, <laughs> we started that 2015, and we just like um, we took a break, and then I met you. And when I was like, was I working on it, or was I like trying to start it? You, oh yeah, I was, because I was taking my. Um, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was taking my copy, like the printed out copy paper to um, my job. And he was like coming up there and he's like, I think pick, you picked me up in Uber and that's how you find out I write poetry. Mm -hmm. So that's when I really started getting back into it again. And I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And, you know, I graduated from criminal justice, but I don't do nothing that got anything to do with criminal justice these days. I don't worry. <laughs> A lot of people who like they like I met a cop one time who was an accounting major you know what I'm saying like and like that's totally different accounting and police work are two completely different things so like I think that's interesting um so how did you get into the field of writing you know what you've been a criminal where did you go to school I went to um well I originally started off at Kent State and then that's I did that huh Kent State in Ohio yeah Ohio, and I was originally trying to like do fashion, um, but I changed my major to business. And you know, I'm not gonna get into the details of everything, but I ended up at Lakeland, at Lakeland um, Community College, and I did a two year, two years there, and I did my got my associates, which was good for me. I had one job in that field, and I was being a, um, I was a. Um, paralegal's assistant and I feel like that was pretty pretty interesting were you writing when you was a paralegal huh were you writing like did you start writing your poetry when you was a paralegal or was this like no I did this in Charlotte I was a paralegal assistant so like you know I would do like court office run I'd do like run to the um, court print out documents files stuff like that Coffee, so I didn't really do much, but it was it was pretty funny. When did um like 
Like where in that did her morning one come, you know, come Oh, out? it didn't it started so when I moved to Charlotte, it started after that. Um it started after that. So I would say a year, two years. No, yeah, two years after I was in Charlotte, I started back working on it. Because I've been in Charlotte for like four years now. That's not true. So, so you said you started back working on it. Were you working on it when you was in um, Ohio too? Yeah, I was working with my cousin in 2015. Wow, wow. We was working on it. So, like, um, in the book, I um, you'll you will see, I want to in a hardback, you will see pictures that we did take. We actually did a video too. I haven't um, figured out if I want to share that yet, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. Me running through the woods, it was just fun. Yeah, it was just was fun. definitely documented, you know, just for your, you know, for your family. You know how people used to have the camcorders back in the day, and mm -hmm. they got the cassette tapes with all the family videos and stuff like that. That's definitely something you should, if not anything, keep it yourself because that's real, you know. Um, and that just goes back to what you know this podcast is all about. It's like highlighting that, you know what I mean, like because. Most people just see the final product and they don't understand all the work that it takes to actually put into, you know, a, a novel. And it's the small, like you can count on, well, you got a lot of authors in your family, but like just in general, it's hard to count on one hand how many authors you actually know. Like, I remember I did a book signing, my, my first book signing for the alarm clock. It was actually in Charlotte. Um, Charlotte got, like, wonderful energy, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like... Yeah, they do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had my eyes there with me too, in Charlotte. But like, when I was in the barbershop, uh, it's over there off of Mount Holly, Huntersville. And um, there was a guy, he was from Baltimore, and he came... Uh, to my, you know, to my book or whatever. He said, I've never seen a black author in my life. And I was at the time, I was only 22. And then he was like, um, you inspired me to want to share my story. He was like, he got clean from crack cocaine in 1991. You know what I'm saying? And he hasn't went back with, um, ever since. And he said, he just wanted to tell the story about how he changed his life. So I think it's dope that, you know, with you to, you know, be able to get to this level, you gotta, you know, you gotta get people the flowers while they're here. So I, I definitely respect that just from an author's perspective. And, um, you know, I, I've got some questions for you. Um, like, my first question is like, what what's the narrative of Her Morning Run? Like, what would you like, if you were to like, if somebody were to make a movie about it, like, what would that narrative be? That's a good question. I never even thought about that. That's a good question. Well, it actually the book's supposed to be like a story. So like it's supposed to be a story and I didn't write I didn't put the poems in like um the order that they happen, but I did put the poems in like so it can be more of a better flow, like to make people get more in tune with the book. But like if it was to be someone wanted to shoot it as a movie, I would say it would be more like a girl trying to get through life, um, dating her love life, and she just feel like she got bad luck. And then she probably, she just gets sick of um, trying, so she just started treating people how she treat them, and she realized that's not the the best way to go about it, because she like literally just playing herself. And then you'll see in the book, like her mother telling her she didn't raise her like that. And, you know, that's pretty much, I would say, it would, it would be, it would, It'll be interesting. So you said like it's not in order, like the like the chronological order of when it was Yeah, of when it actually happened. So like I wanted to be a flow, so I made it seem like I was telling a story. So some stuff made it happen way before, but I'll have it at the end or beginning. Like I just have it moved around like and plus I don't want people to get on caught on like, oh, she wrote this is at the beginning, so she might be talking about this. Like so I just literally moved them around and I made them, I put them in an order so it'll flow really nice. That's oh. something my cousin, my cousin Carl told me to do too. Cause at first I had it, I had it in a good order, but I didn't have it in like the order where he, when he told me I got what he was trying to say. So I kind of like 
changed it around a little and I kind of made it flow better like I was telling a story. So, so, have you seen The Godfather? Hmm? You ever watched The Godfather? I heard about it, but I don't think I have it. So The Godfather is one of my favorite movies and um, like, it's uh, it's not in chronological order. Like part one is really part two and part two is really part one. So like, in part one, you got Michael Corleone, who is uh, Don Corleone's son. Um, it's like he's older, uh, and Don Corleone's getting ready to pass away. Not to get the movie away, but um, you know, Michael runs his family business, the organization. You know what I mean? It, it was like ordained to do it. You know, what I mean? his brother, his brother, or you know, or his family. And then part one is like the backdrop of where. You know his people come from kind of like how we was rapping about how like we was talking about you dedicated this book to your grandmother and she's from germany like and so like the, the corleone family they was from sicily and you know it was like you know that's deep you know as far as like creativity not putting yeah. in chronological order because it's still flow that's i feel like yeah. poetry right there within itself <laughs> yeah so I, that, that kind of leads me to the next question. Like, so it says, you can't paint a perfect picture. You have to let the picture paint the scope. That's, that's from mm-hmm. the poem, uh, Perfect Picture. And, and so can I ask you, like, what, what you what you trying to say right there? What, what was your mind that, like, what, 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 I always, what? I don't. <laughs> oh, I always tell myself that today. So like, when I wrote that, I was basically saying, like, Cause I always want stuff to be perfect. Like I'm like perfectionist, like everything gotta be perfect. I think you noticed that too. Like I'd be like, nah, it's not right. I gotta do it. I gotta do it over. So um, it come with me being like a, um, thinking everything's supposed to be perfect and me always trying to be perfect to the point I'm like no longer perfect. And I start like, you know, I start tripping about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I still got it today. Everything gotta be perfect, but I'm not as like, I try when I, when I realize I'm doing it, I catch myself. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, you can't paint the per- perfect picture, let the picture paint itself. Like you just gotta go with the flow and let the picture paint itself because it'll make the whole situation a little bit more authentic and something to remember. That's, that's real. I feel like right now people get so caught up in that. Like it's one, the mentality of us who actually like, as content creators to have the consciousness uh, what people don't think, what blah blah blah, with this, with that, and then it's like you you do it, and then they still do that. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, they are going to critique. They gonna have things to say, blah blah blah. But then there's people like myself. You know what I mean? Like Kiana always tell me, like I always see the good in people. You know what I mean? So like, I and I'm listening to this. Um, it's this uh, audio book I listened to it's called How to Prosper in Hard Times. I probably sent it to you, I don't know, but it was talking about how you should want the people that you want for yourself. You're releasing your book, I want that for you because I know what it's like to release a, you know, two books and what it means to you internally, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel that 100%. Um, I'm gonna go in and share my I'm a, uh, shout out to the brand so part of this uh podcast is being able to uh leverage the networks that's around me um so if you got a business if you're watching this podcast you got a business uh a service you know a property anything you want to list uh get at me uh email no more suits lnc.com to uh, um, send over your information and we can get you on the podcast. So I want to shout out Hershey's, you know what I'm saying? Like Hershey's chocolate, Hershey's got hair for all colors of women. You know, we got all types of natural products. Shout out to my lady. She's been manifesting this for a very long time. So shop Hershey's, you can get your wig pieces, your ponytails, your natural products, all of that great stuff. 
I don't know if they got any discounts on the site right now with it being the holidays, but you know, you can stay in the loop about where you can find out about the discounts, the specials, et cetera. Hair sheet is where it's set. I don't know much about the hair industry, but ladies, y'all, y'all know that that's y'all industry. But you want to make sure you go to hair sheet, which is the freshest hair company on the block, hairsheet.com. So what's your favorite poem from Her Morning Run? Mm. That's a good question. I don't really have a um I got favorite poems, but um I can't really like pick one. But I would say um the ones that give me like um chills is the ones about my mom. Okay. Which, what, what's your mother's influence on you and on this project? Mm -hmm. like, what is your mother's influence like on this mm -hmm. project? Like, like how, like I know like for me, my mom like is the inspiration behind everything that I do. And so like, even in the alarm clock, and shout out to you, like, this is like, this is bomb as hell, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I got my book stupid on the cover that's really illmatic, you know what I'm saying? She has a cousin book on there as well. Like that's <laughs> that's how you that's just that's just loyalty. I, I I respect that 110 percent because that's the only thing that long after me and you gone, you know, but yeah. I in the long clock, I create moments that I I share with my mother just so that I can relive it every time that I write it. I mean, every time that I read it, you know, or anybody who read that can share that experience too. So, mm -hmm. what was your mother's influence? You say your mother, the poem was just about your mother, you know, inspire you most. What would you say about her influence? Her influence was like, even time, like, she, like, she just know me. So, like, when she seen I was, when she see I'm not myself, she always asked me, or like, she'll say, like, what's wrong with you? Or, you know, like she'll she'll talk and uh, honestly she motivated me at the time like she was like my motivation if she see me slipping she'll come catch me so like even when after the poem um my super ego on me she at that time i was like those was put together purposely because it's like when she see me slipping she had to like catch me like and then at the end she tell you well, you know you're worth more than what you settled for Cause when you like, she just let me know that I'm not, you know, nobody. <laughs> well, what you because you're a mother too. So like, how does that love that you're talking about, like understanding that that energy, how does that have an impact on you, like, uh, you know, as a as a mother? And I got another question I want to follow up, you know, with that at the end of that. Say that again. Like, what, what would you say, like, how does your mom's impact on your life have an influence on you as a mother? Oh, well, her first off, being overprotective. I never understood why she was so protective. Like, she would, um, I'm sorry, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> she was overprotective. I hated that she was overprotective. So she, um. It came, it, it rubbed off on me as a mother, but I understand why she was so overprotective with us. To today, she overprotected with us. Like, and I mean, I understand like her hard work and dedication and how much, like why she did all the stuff she did with for us growing up. And I just, you know, I understand her a lot more as a mother now that I got two kids. And I also know it's not easy because I got two, she got five, so. <laughs> and not only just us, she raised my cousin, my god sister. Well, two of my cousins and my god sister, and they were way older than me. They were like seven years older than us. Than me. <laughs> that's, that's so real. Like, and so, like, you know, a lot of people take their mother term, and, and it's like you have Mother's Day once a year, but, you know, and, and then they, honor people, mothers on that day, but at the same time, like mothers should be honored every day because, you know, I live with the mother, you know what I'm saying? The mother of my seed, I, I, I've been raised by a mother. I see how hard y'all have to work. And now me as a father, 
you know, under it's, it's just certain things that people who aren't in that fraternal or, you know, that maternal group may not understand. But at the same time, it's like, and even me as a man, I, I don't understand everything that a mother has to endure. But like knowing that and then still seeing like your mother be like a warrior and to take care of, a, you know, a tribe and then you reflect that same energy and still have the vision and the dedication to get these projects out. Like, that's tremendous. So like, my next question to that would be like, what advice would you give women with children who has a vision, you know what I mean? We want to push something out to the world, whatever it may be, whether it be them launching a company, whether them wanting to write a book, whether it be them wanting to dance, wanting to be a radio host, you know, et cetera. I would say for one, being like a mom is not hard. Like some people go, you know, they do full-time jobs, come home, take care of their kids. You know, I've been a single mom before and did everything, you know, by myself. Like, but I know, and I know it's hard too. So might as well be like, stay motivated. And like, um, being a mom can also discourage you. Like, oh, I gotta take care of my kids. I can't do this. My kids come first. I would say like, yeah, your kids come first, but sometimes you gotta put yourself first in certain situations. Like, you know, you gotta, somebody can't forget about yourself either. Or you just like, you would still you get older, like, oh, I should have did this. Like, when you should have just learned how to balance it. And some people don't know how to balance it. I'm still learning too. Because sometimes I sit at the computer, I will ignore everybody. You too. <laughs> you be sending me shit. I'll be looking. I'm like, I can read this right now. <laughs> and I'll look at it later, though. But like, I would literally zone everybody out. Yeah. And, and that's, that's self love, you know. Like across the board, like people have to respect it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got a cousin. I was like, I can, I can talk to you in ten years as if I was talking to you the day before. You know, because it's like it's respect for life. Like you know, everybody can't go where you go, and everybody can't do what you do. You know what I'm saying? So like, people have to respect, and they have to understand that. Um, I was gonna ask you, like, you know, it's it's eight o'clock in the morning. You know, what I mean, we up early, like, and then like your book is called Her Morning Run. So, like, when did you start waking up early? Like, it's something about people who get up early. Like, they got their reasons for like why they wake up early in the morning. So, what gets you up early? Mine was being a little girl and seeing my grandma wake up in the morning and drink coffee for one. And I just always feel like, oh, I wish I can get up in the morning and feel peaceful like my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandma, both of my grandmas at that, I always seen them wake up in the morning, drink their coffee, and go about their day. My mom too, but she just wasn't really a coffee person, but she did every once in a while. It's just like something about waking up in the morning, drinking coffee, starting your day early. I don't do it every day, I'm not gonna lie. But when I do, I have a better day. And it started off, you know, and then going to work, you know, you wake up, you get ready for work, you get your coffee, or you go stop at Starbucks, Dunkin' and Donuts, Dunk and Donuts, or something like <laughs> That's lit. Um, so that leads me into, uh, you know, the next company here. I want to shout out um, my good man. He just called me. He out St. Lucia right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, so my good man, KB, you know what I mean? You want to shop KB, KB Enterprise.co. Well, KB Enterprise CO.com, you know, they are straight out of DC. Shout out to Southeast, shout out to Baloo. He the head coach of uh, Baloo High School. I know that's your last name, Tina. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, you know, shout out to Baloo. Best of luck to to that squad, you know, best of luck to my good man, KB. He the youngest uh, head coach in DC. He just turned 27. This is his brand, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Women, if you want to go to Nike, scratch that out your mind and think about KB. Shout to see what they got first before you go to Nike. KB is Steve Dodge, you know, whoever, uh, Phil Knight, you know what I mean, real rap. So they got the custom leisure wear for, for women, exclusive. Um, you got the KB ones and it just dropped. 
You know what I mean? Me and my lady, we got our pair. So you got to shop KB. They got the stocks. You want to get that red box collection. You know what I mean? Authentic. You know what I mean? I've never seen too many people with their own shoe, but KB is one of the few. And we're going to end it right there. Shop KB. All right. So, Tiana. Yes. My next question for you would be like, how would you describe yourself? Like, what you mean? Like, like describe my book. Like, you as your personality type. Like, if somebody, like, you know, um, just like when you just think about when you meet somebody, like, for the first time. Like, when we met, like, I was in Uber, I was just trying to pay my you know, my bills, I was getting ready to release, you know, Book of Rhymes and I just was trying to stay afloat. And so I was Ubering my way to Charlotte, you know, and then me and Tiana connected, you know what I mean? And it was just off of the poetry, nothing else. And so like, you always represent yourself. You always be your authentic self in every situation. I always told myself when I was driving Uber that I didn't care if it was a CEO in the car, or homie from around the way, I treat everybody the same, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, I stay who I am in every situation. So like, in you, like, your physique, when you getting up in the morning and you know you about to go to a networking function, what energy would best represent you that, that makes you up from the time you was born to the time you started writing to right now? And where you about to be, where you about to go in the future. So you want me to tell you? Just how would you describe yourself? Yeah, I know. I thought you were talking about the book, so. Um, you throw the book in there if you want to. No, 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 no. You said, how would you describe it? Um, did you know I be? <laughs> yeah, I know. I be, <laughs> I be in my own world sometimes, but um. I would describe myself as, um, okay, I'm gonna say shy. In a book, I say shy girl, low key, but never get it twisted. Okay, so yeah, shy girl, low key. But um, like the people that know me, I joke a lot. You will find out I'm like silly. I don't catch on sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I just be in my own world. So, um, and I'm friendly. But most people, when you know you come across me, you would assume that I'm mean. I didn't heard a couple people say that. Um, I'm understanding to a certain extent and you know I'm just really I'm really a family person I love my friends and family those probably the only people that can get under my skin <laughs> because they know so much so like you know that's another reason why I try not to let people in so much because you know, the closer you let people in the more they you know get to know you and then they think they know you but they really don't <laughs> That's what blows me, but I mean, you, know what you don't know me. You think you know me well, she don't know me. <laughs> that's why I used to listen yeah. to each other growing up. <laughs> I, that's real shit. Like, you know, people don't, they, they, and then when they really get to know who you are, they don't like, they don't like you. <laughs> there are people that know you, and then they don't, they, they, they think you're supposed to stay a certain way. Yeah, facts, one hundred percent. You know, and I, I asked me, I, and you probably are too. You probably gonna struggle with that because, you know, for me, it's not many people from around my way who is an author who's you know doing you know serial entrepreneurship, you know, et cetera. And so, like, for me, it's, it's a struggle because you don't see that where where I'm from. But it's weird because, like, if somebody get taken out, then everybody want to honor that person. But then it's like, for somebody who's actually surviving the system, you know, who's actually alive to live to see another day, you know what I mean? I think that that alone should be honored. Um, but, like, a lot of people, they got self-hate. And I feel like that's what took Nip out, for real, for real, because it's like, um, People just can't identify with self enough. Like in Alarm Clock, chapter 11, I talk about like when you got a vision, people not gonna believe in it because they never seen it. 
they got to see something to believe, but you know, they believe in Jesus and they never seen Jesus. But when it comes to an idea that's powerful, you know what I'm saying? That, that came from what people would call Jesus, like, you know, came from a higher place, like, and, and it manifests just like with your book, like, you know what I mean? Shout out to your book. You know what I mean? I know this, mm -hmm. I know you working on some more additions. Um, and so you want, let's, can we, can we talk about that? Like real quick, like, what do we expect to see for for like this project? Like what, what you currently working on um, and when people can actually get it, when can people actually, you know, get the copy? The, um, well, for the paperback, I kept it pretty simple because there's so much more I want to do. And just like the big mouth I got, I spoke too soon because I was so excited, but I was actually done like, and I just spoke too soon. So it kind of put a lot of pressure trying to get it done and get what I wanted because I was too excited. And um, I mean, I want I mean, people can expect a good, they can expect a, good, a little everything, like with the book as far as like, you know, females, I would probably try to say females will love it. I mean, if a guy into poetry, they'll love it. And mm, you can, I'm a girl, so I'm thinking about people in the, in the hip hop realm, no, like I, I yeah, I wouldn't say. I well, that's another thing I want people to know. Like, I wouldn't say my poetry is not like you no know, roses or red, violets or blue type of poetry. I have my own style of poetry. I write my own way. Um, I will say people read my music. I mean, speak. I said music. Read my poetry and they think about music. Um, and I've been told that like more than once. So that's been, so when people more than one person say it, it's pretty funny. Start be like, oh wait, should I do that? Should I write music? But people when they get it, you don't get bored reading it, I'll say that. I mean that's that's the dope thing about um no more suits. Like well my vision part of it, and I think we probably talked about this before, but like my vision for uh mm -hmm. no more suits like how Sorry. <laughs> I was telling you, I got your books too. Um, like, wait, what? You probably made one of the first purchases on, on Book of Rhymes, you know, back in 2018. Laura Clock, like, I was just going to give them away. He was like, no, I'm paying for that shit. Like, that's love. Yeah, I ain't I'm like, you can't <laughs> give me your book. I'm, you try to do it both times too. I mean, that's just, I'm a very generous person. You know what I mean? That's, that's just how I'm built. But at the same time, like part of my vision for No More Soups was like to bring authors together, like to create kind of like how hip hop, like like I'm a fan of hip hop, like, you know, the hip hop started out with like just the beat breaks, like with the old Marvin Gaye sample. And then, you know, it's just wrecking on the record and then somebody just spitting the poetry based off of that beat. You know what I'm saying? And that's like a whole nother form of music because, you know, you don't have Marvin singing on the track no more. You got somebody talking that talk, you know what I mean? Kind of, you know how, how the bars we be dropping, you know, you got people talking. And I feel like now we're doing the same thing with, with paper, with literature. Like, you know, I read a lot of books, you know, and most books you got, you know, just information, you know what I mean? And it's in the form of chapters, but now it's like the level of creativity that we all like. Your book is not a typical book that somebody would read, you know what I mean? But you still get the same dosage that you would Michelle Obama, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I look at it anyway. So like you open the door, whether you realize it or not, because you open it, somebody will watch this interview. It could be a female watching this interview. Damn, I've been wanting to do this my whole life, but I never knew how to do it. And like you said, you can't paint the perfect, the perfect picture. You got to paint yourself. You know what I mean? That's true. The only thing that you know, with um, with me, I always said I want to write a book. I think I've told more. I like people been knowing this since 2015. Like I want to write a book. I want to write a book. And I didn't never know how I was actually gonna do it. I just knew I was gonna do it. So like, it's kind of weird that I actually did it. So like. I know there's a lot of people be like looking kind of people probably be confused on what I'm doing or what I'm trying to do and it kind of like it don't frustrate me but it kind of like discourage me like oh my god they think I'm like I don't know like 
it's kind of hard to come out of a shell when you've been in a shell, yo. Like, and most people, only people that's close to you, you know, you did this. Like, I always post little things, like, you know, little little stuff, but like, I never actually took it this serious. But it's always something I did write down and like share with my family and friends. So they all know, but like, for it to actually happen, it feel like people are, cause you know how Instagram and stuff is. So people are already thinking crazy, like who this bitch think she is? Nana Speaks, like I've been Nana Speaks since I had an IG. <laughs> like that was my nickname since I first started before I knew I was gonna be putting out a book. So it's kind of weird when it all is like, you know, but. Yeah. I feel like, like you said, it's the perfect picture because, like, you ain't know all this stuff is gonna happen and it's kind of felt in place. Like, yeah, I just had to, you know, I, when I even first started writing poems and stuff, them poems was funny. I wish I still had that diary. I don't even know where it's at, but yeah, I've been writing the right. I knew I wanted to write poem, poetry when I was younger. And I'm gonna give you an endorsement because I'm a. You know, I'm a, I'm a author. I'm, you know, I'm a, I can, I'm not a critiquer, but I'm. If anybody would want to get criticism, like you know, in the author world, they would rather get it from me as opposed to somebody who's very brilliant and smart, but don't have no books out. You feel what I'm saying? And then you already know my writing style is it, justified for itself. But like this book, like I want to endorse the hell out of it because. As a poet, as a creator, like this shit is really dope. I look at it like, you know, I'm not religious. You know what I mean? They say that the Jew was a Negro anyway. So, you know, uh, King David probably was our cousin. You know what I mean? But like, this is like the book of Psalms. You know what I mean? And I can say that. So, because it's just like, why not? You know what I mean? We got to praise our women. We got to give back to them. They don't want. This, the way the system is set up, they don't want the man to praise the woman. They rather us praise other men. You know what I'm saying? That's like the Western world order. And it's nothing wrong with that, but we got to equally praise our women because y'all get left out. And there may be a lot of guys who want to praise you, but they can't because they're, however, just, you know how the system, whatever the systematics is, maybe because it's like, it, they ain't got blue eyes, white face, you know what I'm saying? Then they can't praise that. But at the same time, we got to praise our, our women. And I, and I pride myself on that because, you know, I got a mom, you know, I lost her mother in 2009. But she started her own salon on the ground up. We got a project coming out 1975. Shout out to my brother that talk about, you know, a woman who got it out the mud, you know, who started literally from the bricks and created concrete and still made roses go out, you know what I'm saying? And so like that has to be honored. And so like I would I'm honoring Tiana as if somebody from back in my mama day would honor, you know, my mother, you know what I'm saying? She got love from everybody. So like we gotta get back in the habit of doing that because you know, it's a lot of queens out here who's really putting in work. And so, you know, like I said, then we got to give you the flowers while you're here. Uh, Ground Up Distribution is an initiative that I started uh, this year. And it's pretty much um, an education company. We focus on education, uh, you know, because there isn't any you got people who are starting to educate a lot more, but like from around the way, it's a lot of people who is looking to get in transportation, but don't know how or where. So we just finished up a two month course that you can purchase now on the site. Um, it's called the Three Pillars of Dispatching. So transportation is a $700 billion industry and um, it's freight moving every day. It's freight moving around us right now, even at, at seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, you know, I'm on central time right now. And so like the three pillars of dispatching, the most important people in the industry is the dispatchers. So this is a course where we train you how to effectively 
create a dispatch in business. And I train people, Tiana, from a perspective of not being an employee, but being a business owner who needs responsible people to manage that company. And so we talk to you about managing freight, managing trucks. Uh, we even talk to you about, you know, you got Mr. Washington up here, president and CEO of Nationwide Business Lending. He came on the course and was talking about how you get financing. Like if there's a truck driver who's working for another company but want to work with you because they like the vision for your company, they got the emotional commitment, they see the vision. Um, how do you get them on? You go get that equipment financing uh, with your business credit um, and you get them in a truck. We talk about thinking grow rich. Uh, we read from chapter two on um, desire and we talked about how Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, which was uh, written back in 1937, how that relates to the publishing industry now. Um, so like, Tiana, like, what's your vision? What's the vision for yourself like in the next 10 years? Like, you know, I'm an Aquarius, so I always be thinking, ahead you know what i mean i'm like in my mind i'm in 2025 you know what i mean i'm in my mind i'm in 2025 thinking about 2028 <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's just how my mind work but where you see yourself in, in 30 in not 30 years but <laughs> 10 years where you see yourself well i always um i mean i always thought i was gonna actually well the last four years, I did think I was actually going to try to go to the police academy <laughs> and do that, but I didn't, which I'm happy I didn't, because either way, <laughs> I'm just I'm not interested no more, but... Um, you said you was going to do what? Go to the police academy four years ago. Oh. That's what I was planning to do, is go to the police academy, but I didn't. So it's kind of crazy that I ended up like actually publishing a book and I feel like I'm way more interested in this than I ever would have been in um, being a cop. I'm just not interested in, I don't um, no shade, but it's just, you know. You can't get creative. You can't get as creative. I would, yeah, it, it takes me out of my creative environment, but like, I like the space that I'm in. And you know I see I mean? myself creating. Can I ask you a question? Like, do you see yourself like being a business? person of your, of your book and then like, yeah and then that's what all corner office like downtown charlotte where people actually can come meet which you you know you see myself book. i see myself still doing that i see myself doing both i see myself doing um still working on like you know have my own like fashion line i always go and do that i don't care where i'm at in life um i'm always going like think about having a fashion line, a clothing line, not fashion line. <laughs> and now that I've published a book, I like the way it makes me feel. I like the energy it gives me. You know, it always gives you something to do, like, and it keeps you motivated. I just like the feeling. So, like, that's something, like, you couldn't have told me if I never published a book. But now that I actually do it, I don't think no people, nobody really get what I, like, get the whole situation of actually doing it. Or why people don't understand why I'm always saying, hey, morning run. When I do do it, I do be posting and I just like people be probably, I feel like people be thinking that, like looking crazy, but I think it's all in my head too. So, like, I see myself definitely, I'm already, I told you my ideas. So, I'm definitely publishing more books and it's going to be really dope. So, man, it's like, uh, you know, uh, James Baldwin, Nikki Giovanni conversation. They both were the authors. Uh, Nikki Giovanni was a, a poet in the early, like, 1960s. And she's still alive today. She's not too far from where I'm at now, Knoxville. And mm -hmm. James Baldwin, everybody knows James, you know, Baldwin, his literature, his mind, power, you know what I mean? I feel like we the modern that, you know what I mean? I feel like that's what this conversation is real talk. And then we, we've even entertained uh, conversations of working on some projects together, you know what I mean? Like putting your writing style with my writing style, I think that'd be really, from a reader's standpoint, you know 
I mean, I think that'll be really dope because, like I said, I read a lot, and you got a lot of books where it's co-authored by, for example, Sharon Lecture. She um, she co-authored uh, Napoleon Hill's book. You know what I mean? She was just complimenting his writing style and reiterating it from the perspective of a woman. Like this. so, there's so many different things in this industry that you can do. It's like like you said, it's like making music. Mm -hmm. So um, where like can people follow you at? Where can um, you know, where can you know, they keep in contact? Like if somebody wanna reach out, like if a woman wanna reach out to you, or a young girl who's on here, maybe even a fellow who wants advice or writing these tips, like how can they email you, uh, which are social sites, et cetera? Well, it's, um, my Instagram is underscore Nana Speaks right now, and that's where I would, you know. Okay. My... For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, shit. Like, I know, you know, like I said, we both parents, you know what I mean? I know you're a busy woman. Um, so I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being on, you know, this first, you know, uh, podcast. I'm just doing this for authors as you know associated with this, you know what I mean? Just to keep it exclusive because I know I'm not good at commitment myself, but I'm committed to an author. So it's like um anybody that's an author, um, you know, and for all other authors, you know, y'all are welcome to get your book on No More Suit Site. Like, um, you know, uh my, my biggest thing was uh just not it's a friendly competition, you know, with Amazon. It's just like, you know, even like the message in the lock lock again, like I'm talking about how like you see all these big businesses, but none of our cousins, none of our aunties, none of our uncles, no nobody that look like us owning companies, you know what I'm saying? And so like I wanted to segue the market and like, okay, wait a minute. Barnes and Noble can do that, we can do that too. I mean, you know, Spark can do that. We can, we can do that too. And so that's all No More Suits is. It's really just something that we can call ours, you know what I mean? And it's a collab, you know what I mean? And we all got fresh, melanated skin on, on our um, on our site, you know what I mean? That's just natural. It's not, I'm not going to say, you know, Blacks only, but I'm just saying, like, that's just what naturally attracts to us, you know what I mean? That's who we naturally connect. Me personally, I naturally connect with my people, you know what I mean? So, but it, like, I'm not saying that it's exclusive, you know what I mean? But like, just naturally, we all come from the same source. You know, like I got a, I got a German aunt too, you know, and she was like, we come from black people. <laughs> you know, I think people get caught up in that, but at the same time, no more suits, it's just a platform for creating. So, uh, again, I appreciate you being on this podcast, um, you know, this is something that we can look back on 2030, like, damn, man, you remember we was talking about this year, back then, look where we at. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, well, you take it easy, have a wonderful day, much love, um, much prosperity to everyone in run, um, much prosperity to you in 2021. Um, yeah. So, well, thank you. All right. <laughs>